All right, welcome back everybody. Thanks again for joining us here at the Training, Learning and Development Communities AI Labs. And we have been doing a lot, a lot of lab work in LA, in, in AI. Oh man, see, um, my brain is already melted with all the tools and all the concepts that we've been discussing. And it's still just only day two, but we only have a couple more sessions left for today. And, um, and yes, I'm very, very um, happy to introduce you to Don Asin, who has actually been on a TLD cast before, like in, in 2019 it was. And back when Brent was hosting, and um, I remember that one, uh, Dan had kind of introduced his product, Swipe Guide, to us. And we we're talking about how it was integrating into a uh, manufacturing facility and um, some of the features it had. And at that time, there was a little bit mention of AI, and that was four years ago. So I am interested in hearing more about how, um, how uh, Swipe Guide is using AI in in um as in in its product um but let me just read everybody a little bio <laughs> a little bio on 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 don um don is a dutch b2b tech entrepreneur with vast experience in educational sciences and instructional design in 2016 he founded swipe guide an ai powered instructional how to platform that empowers frontline teams to standardize procedures share best practices and develop skills swipe guide is trusted by companies like ABB, Heineken, and Coca-Cola to optimize operational efficiency across 92 countries. In his free time, Don loves traveling to mountainous areas where he can ski with his family. That sounds great to me. So everybody, we're going to be uh, talking today about skills-based learning and frontline upskilling with AI-powered instructions via Swipe Guide. Um, everybody, welcome Don to TLDC. And Don, I'm going to go ahead and just hide myself from the stage and let you take it away. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks very much for the great uh, intro, Luis. And uh, yeah, thanks all for joining this session. Very excited to, to talk about, uh, well, this mouthful of uh, topics, skills-based learning, upskilling, reskilling, and then also uh, throwing AI in. So that's quite a bit. So let me start by uh, sharing my screen so we can do a little intro of uh, the topic. Uh, let's go. I think it's loading. Yes, there we are. Um, yeah, so the theme of this uh, session as uh, introduced already, skills-based learning and frontline upskilling with AI-powered instructions. As said, AI has been a theme for us uh, already quite some years. Uh, we think it's a great tool uh, that helps instructional designers uh, create better material, but also like uh, augment uh, solutions that we bring to the front line uh, with with sort of powerful features that can, can help us become more effective. So I'm going to tell you a bit more about how we see this world of both skills-based learning, the movement in that direction, and then uh, our journey in AI uh, so far. Uh, introduction not needed anymore, so let's uh, jump in. So uh, first touch point will be uh, the movement towards skills-based learning, especially for clients that we work for that are working with large frontline uh, staff audiences to uh, run their operations. This whole skills-based motion is important. Then we'll uh, talk a bit at point two about how we see that and how we make the connection between skills and learning. Uh, and then I'm, I'm focusing after that on our journey in AI because it's a very powerful tool to also enable that, that skills-based learning and support this connection. And then the, at the end, we have some time for uh, Q&A. So that is uh, sort of the roadmap for this uh, session. Uh, let me jump straight in. So skilling and skills are a big theme. Uh, we hear a lot of the struggles that our customers are having, especially in manufacturing and engineering companies, people in, in sort of the HR space, the broader HR space and management also worry a lot about the intensifying brain drain. So a lot of companies struggle with filling open positions. And you also see quite some, some uh, attrition. So people that leave the job uh, because they just see a lack of career development uh, being one of the top um, reasons for leaving to other jobs uh, in, in companies. 
And this sort of puts quite some pressure on companies to rethink how they do recruitment, how they do onboarding, how they do uh, sort of talent and career development within their company. And that's what we see is a struggle that a lot of companies are focusing on. And well, you see the research behind this in the source uh, links that are uh, uh, on the bottom left there. Uh, the next thing is that uh, we also see that the dynamic in the workplace is uh, growing. So uh, there is research uh, from the World Economic Forum that says like by 2025, 50% uh, of all workers in companies will need upskilling or reskilling. So there is this continuous need to learn new skills because, uh, well, the jobs change, the context becomes more complex uh, because of new technologies, new ways of working introduced. So that puts on quite some pressure on our domain of how do we make sure that all these people have the right skills. And we also already now today from research that McKinsey has done, when you interview executives, see that they are already facing skills gaps in their operations. And we see, especially when you talk about frontline audiences that are often hard to reach with, with the learning and development, that the approaches that we have and the tools that we used are often just not designed for these teams. So that makes the struggle uh, even bigger, I would say. Uh, we see that often like the approaches that companies have to training are not really working because often they're not really integrated in work. So if you talk about a skills-based approach, uh, it has to be very practical. It has to be workplace oriented. Uh, often the approaches are not really aligned with how people learn and especially how people learn today. So the new generations. Uh, often it's away from work in classrooms or in lengthy e-learning courses behind a computer in a one-size-fits-all approach. Uh, that in the end then leads to all, well, I don't have to tell you all the problems with, with transfer and, and, and retention uh, once people actually start doing the work. And then once they hit the shop floor or, or the, uh, are active in the front line, they have to rely on work instructions. And, and when we look at the work instructions that we often see in companies, they're really stuck in the past century. So the material is often like paper in binders. Uh, sometimes it's PDFs in SharePoint. Uh, sometimes it's just like an old paper stuck on a machine, but the, there is some commonality. So the material is often very difficult to understand. Uh, it's hard to find the right material at the moment of need. Uh, it's not easy to use. You have to do probably a lot of reading or searching. Uh, often it's not even up to date. There's definitely no tracking going on. So where do people get stuck? Uh, uh, and also the whole upkeep is often uh, pretty, uh, pretty complicated. So uh, uh, training solutions, instruction solutions that need to support workers, there is this struggle. And on the other side, the opposite side of this coin, you want to track what people are actually capable of. And there we see often in, in companies that, that we start with uh, Swipe Guide in, that they do their skills management still in, in Excel. So they have these, these uh, huge files with all the skills that they defined, defined and then all the people and an Excel per team and like a, a, a huge upkeep. Also that always outdated, a huge administrative hassle. Uh, it's often compliance driven. Driven, so it doesn't resonate with the frontline workers in terms of, hey, I'm developing my career here. Uh, it doesn't really sync with assessments. It's just like people in, in, in sort of back office roles or managers or supervisors putting in data, putting in the data in the sheets, also very error prone, I would say. And often it's not really accessible for the frontline. So there are quite some struggles in our field of uh, learning and skills development that we need to tackle to really become this uh, smarter skills-based uh, learning uh, approach uh, uh, within the company. So that shift to skill-based uh, learning is the first thing that I want to touch upon because uh, AI will help this shift. Then I will come back to that a bit later. But this is a shift. So for instructional designers, I think it's pretty common. There are a lot of theories around there that already point in this direction. Uh, we need to be uh, more focused on realistic, practical, actionable learning activities, moving away from courses, moving to resources, not define a path, but 
give people a pool to pull from. Uh, combined plan training, still on the job training, can be very powerful, but also tap into learning in the workflow uh, and use performance support. And also think about, okay, how can we support that informal informal learning on the work in the workplace? And then, of course, with the new technologies, the role of the instructional designer will change. Like we have a lot of experience where uh, ID people more focus on, okay, how can we support our users in the front line to generate their own content and how can we use AI to generate that content? And that's a topic that uh, we'll get back to a bit later. For the frontline workers, a lot of stuff changes and uh, for the good, I would say, they get way more personalized learning experiences that drive their motivation and engagement. Uh, the learning takes place on the job, in the workflow, so less transfer problems as we know them from uh, from our training practice. Uh, and for them, it's way clearer what the organization demands from them in terms of skills because we can give them access to their skills profile and support self-directed learning if we have the right tooling in place. That for the organization in the end means that you have a way more effective uh, training setup, so way better ROI, uh, you have real-time insight into how the skills of the work of, of the frontline workers are developing and where you have current and future skills gaps that pop up that are a risk for your operations. Um, and you can be way more responsive in learning activities. So when you identify, for instance, in manufacturing, when there is a, a, a loss in the man method sort of domain, that's, that's like manufacturing terminology, you can immediately act upon it with skills-based learning activities that have a direct impact on the running of your operation. So there's a lot of power in sort of changing from our traditional approach to more skills-based learning closer to the workplace. Um, from a swipe guide perspective, we try to tap into this field and help our clients uh, get there. So traditionally, we come from a how-to platform where we help companies digitize their instructions, so really capture the actionable knowledge, the best practices um, that help frontline workers do a better job. And then also easily share that. We work for a lot of global companies, so share that across uh, multiple production locations or people that work in the field. So that side is capturing the how-to knowledge uh, in instructions and, and the AI uh, there we will cover later. The other part is then the know-how. So if you have that how-to knowledge, that actionable knowledge, which actually describes how to execute work, so is related to skills, if you use that in your skills development, then you develop how-to of a know-how. So how-to is the sort of uh, explicit knowledge that you have stored in your system with the know-how. You turn it into a skill by actually uh, onboarding people, by retraining, upskilling, reskilling them, and by sort of having them move up the ladder in terms of their skill proficiency. So develop new skills, manage them, and also on a company level, identify skills gaps. So these are the two domains that we think you need to connect when you talk about skills-based learning. And we do that by combining technologies. So our traditional, well, our initial how-to platform, where you can create really uh, uh, like uh, the uh, how-to knowledge in a very engaging and visual way, plus the know-how system that allows you to track what people are actually capable of executing these how-tos and on what level. So that is, from our perspective, the magic that you can do by combining this how-to perspective with the know-how pers perspective. And I'll, I'll show you in three uh, short slides how, how that works. So what the cycle is within uh, the Swipe Guide solution. So it starts, of course, with capturing the how-to knowledge. So there we use technology to capture uh, the, the how-tos in digital work instructions, checklists, SOPs with a very easy to use editor. So for us, it's important that with a tablet on the shop floor, you can already create your material with a very easy uh, to use editor. Really also involving, and that's where the user generated content uh, comes in, really involve the frontline people in, in sort of capturing that uh, knowledge. We, of course, in the platform then need 
need to build in all the structure, all the things we know from an instructional design perspective to help them create better content. And of course, they're often in our clients' companies, instructional designers or trainers really help people uh, to get, uh, get on a roll there. So that is very important. And also in this part, in this domain, we will have AI uh, applications. Then the other part is then how do we make sure that it is uh, uh, where the action is? So when I'm in need, how do I get access to that how-to knowledge? So we put a lot of effort in integrating that uh, how-to knowledge into the workflow. So we use QR codes, integrations with systems, even now with IoT. So when there is a certain problem in a production line that immediately you can get access to the right knowledge. Of course, that's more like performance support, uh, but we have cases that start with onboarding. So using the how-to platform to onboard uh, people in their uh, jobs and learn them all the skills that they need to learn to operate equipment, to do maintenance, troubleshooting, uh, and, and cleaning and inspection, for instance. Um, so the integration in the workflow is uh, important there, but also, as I said, in the onboarding, uh, continuous training, but also uh, the, the supporting in, for instance, tasks that you don't do that often. So in that sense, we're there in uh, all the moments of need, so to say, when you uh, know what I mean. Uh, so that is giving access to the knowledge in the workflow. And then finally, of course, we want to track the know-how. So if we have that how-to platform that is being used for on, uh, onboarding, uh, continuous training, uh, performance support, we want to have a platform that connects these how-tos to the know-how and, and to the people. So that's uh, why we now... Uh, uh, this week released our skills management solution called Swipe Guide Smart Skills. That is the tool that connects the how-to to the know-how. So in the, the skills side of the, the platform, you can track who is actually capable of doing what. And there's like self-assessment, there's assessment uh, because you need to have some sort of validation. And also in this domain with sort of the, the tracking of training records, the skills matrix, the whole skills management, identifying gaps, then uh, uh, sort of push people for like the skills-based learning based off the how-tos that are in the system. Uh, also in this domain, there is of course a lot of potential for uh, AI. Um, specifically, when we look at the challenge that we see is that how with a solution based off of this skills-based learning uh, paradigm, how do we then unlock and this is sort of my, 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 my mission for, for our field. How can we unlock low cost, but high quality personalized learning at scale with the aim to improve performance? So that, that's for me what it's all about because it is about performance uh, like always for me in, in training, and, and I, I guess you, you will uh, echo that. It is in the end about uh, performance, but we traditionally struggle with the delivery model a bit. Like how do we do it low cost, still high quality, and can we personalize it? Like uh, back in the old days, we did it with uh, like apprenticeships where a master like one-on-one -on -one would really develop the skills of an individual, but uh, yeah, we, we sort of industrialized training a bit to come to a lower cost uh, solution, but we lost a bit of that high quality and, and personalized uh, learning on the go. And we need to get back to that. And that is, I, I think, exactly where technology in a broad sense, but specifically also AI can make the difference. It can take us back to that original state of everybody having sort of a, a master that, that guides them through a personalized learning journey to develop the skills that in the end make them perform at the level that a company uh, wants to see them perform. So that is, that is sort of the aim that we have by connecting the how-to and the know-how and using the technology, but also using AI. And, and, and let's jump into that topic now, because I know we're, we're talking about AI here as a focus point. Um, so let's see how AI can support this. Um, I think there are many, many applications, and I think you, you already in this event probably heard uh, of, of brilliant tools that can do a great job well, for you as an instructional uh, designer. Uh, I want to focus on, on uh, sort of these six domains. So um, 
a no-brainer in, in, in nowadays is translation of, of content. So if we talk about uh, the material also in the Swipe Guide platform, uh, translation using AI is, of course, a uh, low-hanging fruit. I'll get back to that later. Transformation and generation of uh, content is an interesting domain because, well, we talk about generative AI a lot now with uh, ChatGPT and other solutions. Um, and we see, for instance, in the work instruction domain that a lot of these instructions are uh, not really user-centered. So if you talk about a theory like minimalist instruction um, and, and some other instructional design theories, we often see a gap between, okay, this is what research says that is effective and, okay, you create it something else, uh, especially uh, often in material that's not created by instructional uh, designers. And there, of course, the, the transformation of that content into something that is more effective is, is, is pretty interesting. Uh, also, the generation of, of content can be interesting. Well, you probably played around with ChatGPT and you can see the power there. But yeah, you can generate like videos, you can generate whole courses if you would want to go back to sort of that course paradigm, but uh, you, you can do a lot of powerful stuff in that uh, domain. Then intelligent tutoring is very interesting too. Um, there are some very interesting examples, of course, of bringing you that one-on-one -on -one tutor back that helps you personalize your learning experience. I think uh, both uh, Duolingo and Khan Academy are doing very interesting things in this uh, space. Then, of course, we can do with the data that we gather when you use technology, we can do a lot of recommendations. So recommendation in, okay, what would be next uh, for you? That can be combined with intelligent tutoring, of course, but it can also have a, a slightly uh, a different flavor. Then we have the learning and skills analytics part. Uh, yeah, again, if you capture a lot of data in, in your systems that support learning and skills development, then you can use that data to generate new insights, to uh, find problems, to find um, correlations uh, that, that, that tell you something about, okay, if we, if we see that behavior with learning materials like this and we see a performance issue there, we might want to do something about this. So there are very exciting things going on there. And then of course, automated uh, assessment. Yeah, so there's uh, a lot going on in that space uh, too. Uh, for our journey, uh, we, we also, of course, tried to ideate a lot about, okay, what for a, a platform like Swipe Guide with both the how-to and now the know-how, uh, so the the, the uh, on-the-job training and, and, and learning and performance support and the skills management, what would be uh, applications uh, in our space that really uh, utilize AI in a way that we get to a result that otherwise we couldn't uh, achieve. And, and I'll tell you a bit about our journey. Uh, our journey started back in, I think it was 2020, well, tw 2020 actually, because we were prepping for the CES in Las Vegas, the consumer electronics show where we then, uh, as a startup, were uh, exhibiting. Um, and back then we already ideated about a recommendation engine in our uh, editor that could help non-expert instructional designers create better instructions. So how can we, you see here a bit like, it's a bit like a Grammarly for instructions where we not only check grammar, but where we also check the structure of the material that you're creating. Uh, we check against things like standard technical English, uh, minimalist instruction principles, uh, and, and some other sort of best practices in instructional design. And we created this prototype back then. And back then there was no chat GPT, AI was still pretty, um, uh, pretty basic. And, and if you wanted to develop this, you needed to develop like your whole large language model and all the components that you would need to, to, to get this done. Um, as of that, we, we still had a lot of other features to develop. So at some point in 2022, uh, back in Amsterdam, where our headquarters is, we uh, did a lot of work in this space, um, sort of researching uh, AI possibilities. Uh, so to the left there, you see sort of an outcome where we looked at, okay, what can be all kinds of ideas when you talk about our how-to platform back then where AI could play a role. 
uh, and we see that the value is high and the effort is is like relatively low, so reasonable. And and well, luckily you also see some red red items there. Uh, they they might even have changed now, so that they're maybe even easier to do. This is back in 2022 when the world of AI looked uh, looked slightly different still. So we did a lot of work in researching and and making this roadmap. We did experiments with uh, student groups where our engineers together with the students uh, built some prototypes types of the solution and also in 2022 we built or we integrated a first uh, AI solution into our platform being the automatic translation so that is um, uh, something we uh, could of course utilize third-party uh, services but it had a lot of power in our platform and still also was a lot of design and engineering work to get it right in the platform. But as we have a lot of global customers, it gave us a lot of power because we have, well, I think the screen there is from Heineken. Uh, we had companies like Heineken that have breweries across the globe that all have similar processes. Uh, but everybody sort of reinvents the wheel in terms of the uh, the skills based learning or the work instructions that they 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 use. And for instance, if you have like a bottling line, like you see in the image, uh, the bottling line that runs in 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 Belgium might be the same bottling line that uh, that runs in in Chicago, for instance. Um, but in Belgium, everything is in Dutch. And in Chicago, you would need, of course, an English version. So this was very powerful for them already to make the best practice knowledge scalable. And there's like a huge amount of uh, how to's in this platform that are used for onboarding, training and performance support of uh, people across these, uh, I think now 160 breweries that were running global. And they can now easily exchange uh, the material between Belgium, US, uh, but also to Vietnam, uh, Portugal, Brazil, Mexico, they're, they're like global. So content now uh, can travel. And, and in that sense, this is an AI technology that um, yeah, now is pretty common, but is also still pretty uh, powerful for uh, global companies. Then um, this year, I see some some images are missing in this one. But this year, we we uh, of course saw the explosion. Well, end of 2022, we saw the explosion of AI uh, technology. So we were like, oh, okay, we had the roadmap. We thought like, okay, we can we can develop gradually, and we're already building some uh, things. But uh, now we really see the wave coming, and we decided we want to ride this uh, wave. So. Um, what we did is, uh, of course, with that roadmap and all the learnings that we already done, we had the whole product team over in uh, Barcelona, where we spent uh, a full week together that started with, well, looking at the roadmap, looking at the history of everything we'd done and discovered so far. And from that, uh, and with some inspirational talks of, of some AI leaders, we had uh, teams pitch ideas for the platform. And we formed, uh, in the end, three groups that started uh, working on new AI-based innovations for the platform. Um, and you can think of uh, things like, well, that recommendation engine. That, that is the first thing that we also released uh, this year uh, and that you see in the screen. Uh, one of the groups worked on this one, uh, made great progress in the week, and after that week uh, made it production ready. And what we now have in the platform is a recommendation engine that helps uh, users create better content. So what we've built in there is this little instructional design coach uh, that sort of uh, with different prompts and, and, and large language models will check the content uh, and, and sort of use things like minimalist instruction principles, uh, simplified technical English to uh, make it better. So and and then not automatically make it better, but do a suggestion. So help uh, the user to to create better content and also think about okay, uh, uh, is this actually what I want to achieve? Because still there, I think our AI is pretty good, but of course the suggestion can also still be off because we never know what the user will uh, put in. But that is idea one that we. Uh, we uh, got from our hackathon, so to say, in Barcelona that already is implemented. And there are two other initiatives that uh, came out of the uh, hackathon. 
uh, that are uh, being worked on uh, as we speak to also implement into uh, the platform. And where does that then uh, sit? So when we go back to this, how can AI support this shift to bring uh, learning a bit closer to the skills and a bit closer to the workplace, really with this this paradigm of skill-based learning, then we see that translation of content, no brainer. We, we implemented it in the platform as I think already a lot of other uh, platforms have uh, this as a potential feature in the platform. Uh, but it's still very, very uh, powerful uh, in, in many occasions also to, uh, of course, uh, 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 have uh, training for audiences that have multiple languages. Like we just started a new case in a uh, supermarket in the Netherlands where they, in their warehouses, have, I think, 15 different nationalities that all need to be trained. And this is like magic for them. Uh, the other domain where we spend quite some time is that transformation and generation of content. That is for us and for our clients a very important domain because uh, most of our clients already have a lot of how-to knowledge stored in work instructions. They're not really set of, satisfied with what they have, but they want to transform that like sometimes 20,000 work instructions into something better. And that's where that transformation comes in. Sometimes that recommendation engine does the job, but sometimes that transformation, and that's where one of the groups in the hackathon already did quite some work. It is about identifying pieces of information to put into that swipe guide template. Like where is the action? Where is a warning? Where is the, the, the image? And how can we put it in the template, in the digital template within swipe guide? And of course, generation of content. So one of the groups in the hackathon worked on an automated video segmenting. So uh, when you uh, have a how-to, you can, of course, record a whole how-to, but then sometimes a changeover uh, in, 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 in one of the Heineken breweries might be 40 to 50 steps. If you record that in a video, it will be very lengthy, boring, and, 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 and very hard to use for training and, and even harder for performance support. So what we uh, took as a challenge in the hackathon is like, can we then identify where the steps are, uh, break it up into steps, and create the step-by-step -step swipeable swipe guide instruction out of that. So that is also uh, work uh, that we've done in that uh, space already. Uh, these I, these elements like recommendation, build in the, the the transformation generation of content. The other two groups are still work in progress to make it uh, production ready, but uh, very promising uh, results. Intelligent tutoring uh, for us is still uh, pretty light. We didn't really touch upon that yet. Uh, also, the automated assessment, not because yeah, we see that a lot of our clients are. Uh, for the skills-based learning approach, really you still using observation, like uh, man uh, learner self-assessment, then a trainer looks at, okay, can you actually do the job? And also a manager or supervisor then verifying it. So it's we, we have in the smart skills solution a pretty neat workflow that does, does a good job, but it, it will be very exciting to also investigate a bit more there. We know that there are already some nice technologies that can do a job there, but we don't want to stay on the knowledge level. So we don't want to stay on the testing, only testing the knowledge with multiple choice and then automatically giving a score that for us is not really skill-based. That's not what it is about. Uh, we want to be on the skills assessment level there. Two areas where we do some work too is learning and skills recommendation. So we have a lot of data in our platform. Uh, we're now investigating like what are the ways of using that to give recommendations to individual users to already personalize the learning experience a bit uh, more than uh, we do currently. And of course, and we, we have uh, analytics dashboards in our system. Again, a lot of data. What can we do to uh, use AI there? Uh, not because of the use of AI, but because we can do interesting things. Uh, for instance, if we see in a step that people struggle, uh, navigate back, navigate forward, leave feedback, we see anomalies sort of in the behavior of going through the steps. That could mean that there is a problem 
uh, in the material. So that is an example of using learning analytics in that case to improve your content. Uh, but it can go even further. It can go to the level where we see like, okay, in the analytics, we see that in one of the production lines, a maintenance procedure is not used. Uh, and we also see, and then we 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 get to sort of the correlation of of behavior uh, on the learning and skill side with performance on the shop floor. If then the machine output drops, and we see that 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 people are not really uh, skilled in 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 sort of the the preventive maintenance that they need to do, uh, then we can uh, nudge. We can we can uh, sort of. Uh, push a team to really put a bit more uh, effort or focus on that specific area. So these are things under construction, very exciting development. So we are implementing, I uh, would say uh, the first, uh, the first um, things are there, uh, but still a lot of ground to, to cover to, to get to that, um, that mission that I uh, laid out uh, to really uh, get to that low cost, highly uh, high quality, personalized uh, learning that in the end benefits the uh, performance. But uh, yeah, we have we have a vision to uh, to get there. Uh, that's it for sort of my intro. Um, let me pause here, stop here, and see if there are any questions. Uh, stop sharing. Yes. uh yes can people open up the mic uh louise or is it chat? yeah if anybody has any questions feel free to jump in i you know wow you have given us like a lot of information <laughs> it, was, it was fantastic I, I you know the 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 product itself um looks incredible and let's see i'm trying to look you know we have comments like kelly saying love the emphasis on resources path activities over courses uh, let's see, there was something else on here that I saw. Um, yeah, Janet mentioning the how to and know how concept. Um, this is great. So like, how about like something specifically right now that, 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 uh, swipe guide is succeeding at? Um, well, I think for, for, for me, uh, and it was in that mission statement for me, uh, as a, learning professional uh, the struggle i've been in this field for 25 years and the struggle yeah. has always been like how can we really make business impact like i've set up academies and then you have a nice folder with all your training later you had your lms with all the the, the training courses content e-learning but uh, it was always very hard to um, to to really see the impact and especially, I would say, in a situation uh, of our customers where you talk about frontline audiences that are normally hard to reach with, with material, it is great to see that we make an impact. So, for instance, with the how-to platform, we see that we are able to reduce a machine changeover like on a canning line for Heineken from four hours to two hours. So that's saving that's saving two hours in every changeover. And I think that that's like thousands of dollars, right. uh, two hours in every changeover because we make the knowledge available in the workflow. It's not a matter of, we definitely have to do the skills-based learning so people know it by, by head or by heart, so to say. It's just making sure that they have the how-to knowledge there that they can quickly refer to, okay, how do I have to do that? Bam, two hours of saving. Uh, right. We have it like in first time, right? Uh, quality of output, like reducing waste. Uh, and that's that's what really, really excites me. It is also in that mission statement. It is about performance. It is about business impact. And I think there we're doing a good job. Uh, also, yeah, you know that we worked for Heineken when I did my first, when my first uh, session here, we still work for Heineken and we will continue to work for Heineken because we, we make an impact in their business. So that, that is uh, what I'm really um, proud of, uh, sort of as a learning professional, being able to do that. Incredible. It's just so, so, so impressive. Um, let's see, Julie's asking, it's looking at the pricing. <laughs> Uh, do you have any, are there any free trials or anything available? Pricing. I, I think I see Mark Epsi already in the chat. So that's, I would say that's sales. Uh, so uh, we, we, we have some options to do some trialing or proof of value mm -hmm. uh, projects uh, normally. Um, 
but um, uh, yeah, just reach out. I think uh, my contact details are shared and otherwise yeah. uh, M um, Mark is uh, the guy uh, that you can always reach out to Mark at swipeguide.com otherwise Dan at swipeguide.com and we can uh, we can check out uh, how we can make that work okay Mark yeah you can reach out to Julie who asked that question originally I know Annika's in there as well um, yep. Janet and, uh, Janet Clifford who is your target audience uh, small medium large type companies um the target audience that we now well that that Anika and Mark and and the teams focus on is mainly large uh companies because we have quite some features for knowledge sharing between uh sites so that's that's a, a unique uh, selling point, especially when you talk about large enterprise organizations like Heineken, Coca-Cola, PepsiCo, combined with that auto translate, you can do mm -hmm. a lot of scaling in your best practice knowledge. Uh, but the solution itself works for uh, SMEs uh, too. Like it's, it's as said, it's capturing your how-to knowledge, uh, combining it with the tracking of the know-how of the workers uh, can be uh, pretty powerful for 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 smaller organizations too so uh but our 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 outreach teams so to say sales marketing are mainly focusing on uh larger enterprises that's great okay um don are you guys gonna be at any events is there anywhere that people can go to maybe see swipe guide in action anything like that uh they can well, to see Swipe Guide in action, we we do a lot of stuff remote anyway. So the, the there is a demo request uh, option at the website, so you can request a demo anytime. We uh, we we can plan a session, and uh, we like to do a bit of discovery always. Like, okay, what what problem are you trying to solve, and then we can show you how we could solve it with our technology. Uh, and I think Anika is the master of our events will be at the Corporate Learning Week in Atlanta, 2 to 5 October. And I think we have something scheduled in London beginning of next year. We have Connected Workers Summit, I see. So there's a lot of, a, a lot of events going on. Uh, so yeah, people can meet us there. Learning Week Atlanta, uh, Connected Workers Summit. I think Learning Technologies in London, uh, but uh, flexible to do any demo uh anytime uh, remotely too. did you end up doing that ces event in 2020 we did well it was then 2020 we built like the prototype we did, went to the ces in 2021 and it was like an amazing experience that okay. event is really really huge right and it is ins really inspiring to see like all the technologies also the hardware and and everything that oh that, definitely that, yeah that's presented there yeah Cause that's a route when COVID hit. So I remember, cause I, I like to go to CES, but it was, uh, I think it was, I don't remember when it got canceled, but, um, yeah, it's such an impressive, impressive event. Really amazing. Yeah. I think it got canceled a year later or I'm mistaken with the dates and it was 2020, but, uh, we, I, we, yeah. we went there two times, uh, wow. sort of back in the days they, well, they have, of course, this area where new technologies can present themselves. And we were part of that, uh, part of the CES two times. And, um, yeah, it was really for us great to make connection with, with companies that innovate other parts of sort of our domain like smart glasses so a lot of, a lot of hardware there that of course ties into what we uh, do you can also run like our swipe guide viewer on on uh, smart glasses so that a lot of technologies come together there and that was pretty exciting uh, to see yeah excellent all right have we have we got any more questions out there i know that uh um in the audience let's see i'm seeing yeah, I see you've got your team that's working the audience here. Anybody else have anything to ask? I mean, it's it it's definitely an enterprise level product. It's so impressive. Um, I and I really appreciate you uh, doing this presentation. I learned so much about Swipe Guide, and I remembered from back in 2019. I was just like, wow, this is this is really amazing. Um, and so it's great to see that it's still going stronger than ever, um, you know, four years later in 2023. And it looks like um, you're just continuing to make it better and better and better. So, um, so congrats on that. 
Yeah, thanks, uh, thanks, uh, Luis. I'm very uh, also thankful to be back here. I think it's a nice community that you have here to talk about AI and what it, what this can do even beyond sort of what we're trying to achieve with skills based learning to make it even more powerful. So, uh, yeah, thanks for having me and having us. Absolutely. I just want to say, let's see, Sumi's just saying, I can see this product working with technical and process skills. Do you see it expanding into leadership or human skills? Um, we have some examples, but then it often turns out to be a bit more of a micro learning um, element within how to like the buildup of swipe guide is you, you show what you have to do with instructions and then uh, step notes, as we call them, based upon information mapping theory. And that approach works very well when you talk about um, operating stuff. Like that can be even like in, in healthcare, uh, in warehouses. But uh, we do a lot, uh, we, uh, of course, as you from the names can hear in food and beverage, where people have to operate equipment. ABB is a big uh, customer where you talk about maintenance on drives and motors. So it's often in that space where we uh, find the most powerful and, and impactful mm -hmm. applications. Uh, for instance, also software and, and like management skills, we, we do a bit less. And I think uh, there uh, you might need other solutions or other solutions can do a better job there. Right. Oh, thanks for that, Don. Um, all right. Well, I think that's it. I want to thank you again. Thank you and Swipe Guide, your team, Annika. Um, really appreciate you sponsoring the event and actually sharing uh, just some fantastic information about your product. Um, hopefully, uh, we'll see you again at some point. Um, yeah, I would love to see you. I know that I go to conferences every once in a while and, um, you know, maybe I'll run into a booth or something where you're there and, uh, and, and take a peek and say hi. So, um, Thank you, yeah. Don. Great to uh, to connect again. And uh, yeah, thanks all for being here. All right, everybody. So we got one more session to go today. And it's um, Chris Paxton McMillan. I'm talking about, I think we're going to be talking about Lectora and how AI integrates into Lectora. Um, Chris is a regular contributor to all of our events. So um, it'll be fantastic. And, and I think that'll be fun, a fun way to end the day. So again, thanks, Don and team uh, for Swipe Guide. And we'll see everybody in the next one. Bye-bye.